24. Um, I'm going straight to the calculator. Um, these guys are all in the setup. And so, let me autofocus here. Okay. So, with this, um, let's just type it in exactly as we see it. This is a compound interest problem. And it says compounded monthly, and we want to know what the account will be after eight years. Well, that's the easiest form because that is just a straight calculator. Three, four, two, four. That's our starting point. Now, I put parentheses. I don't have to. Um, you can just leave it <clears throat> without the parentheses. But now, because I know it's going to grow, I am going to have to do the one plus part. And then I like to keep the fraction uh, seeable. Okay, so I want to know exactly what I'm doing clearly. And I want to put the interest rate on the top there, so that would be 0.0224, okay? Don't make that 0.224, and definitely don't put 2.24 there. It has to be a percent, so move the decimal. And then we're going to see that, uh, we're going to put how many times it's going to be compounded per year, and because it's monthly, it'll be 12. So push the right arrow to get out. And then we're going to raise that to 12 times however many years we're talking. So it's 8. All right. So 4,095 and 31 cents. Okay. So that would be. Yeah. Okay. It's C. <laughs> I don't know where I was looking, but I couldn't see the answer. Okay. But it's C. Um, next, a little different. Now what I'm going to do is this is compounded quarterly, but why not just keep the same format? I'm going to copy this guy. I'm going to just completely replace the initial value with uh, 2,654. These are pretty much all the same. Um, I got a different interest rate here at 0 .588, and this is going to happen quarterly, so that's just four times. So let's put DEL to get rid of that. We're going to switch up that 12 and just make it a 4. And this is going to be after 17 years. All right, so 7,159 and 16 cents. So, so that's B. All right, what about this? Uh, same thing, but now we've got continuously. So I hope you understand that this will now change the formula completely. We've got um, $6,126, but we're going to be using the continuous, funk, uh, a continuous compound formula. So this is a change, okay? Basically, all of that right on the inside with that exponent will produce the, the value E, which is 2.718, and then it's irrational, so it keeps going. So it's a very special number. I'm not going to get into that right now, though. Um, let's raise this. It's going up, so we'll have it a positive 0 0.0316, and then times uh, 10. All right, so it's an easier formula. 8,401 and 61 cents, so that's A. All right, what will the account balance be here? Same thing. It's almost the same exact problem. <clears throat> We're just going to change the numbers. And you're really showing me here in the study guide that you know how to switch up the formula. Uh, that's 6, 2, uh, 7, and we're doing this for 19 years. 12,503 and 87 cents. Okay. All right, now here's where it gets trickier because now how long will it take? for it to equal that. Now here we've got to do some algebra. Okay. Now you could use the tables. I'll leave that up to you, but I'm going to do it using a log because I actually think the log is faster. So let's set this up. Okay, we've got um, that much here. It's uh, compounded semi-annual. Oh man, it actually, mm -mm. this is going to be easier to use the, the cal calculator. I'm doing that. And because it's multiple choice too. You can see that the numbers are small here. So let's go straight to a table here. Um, it's easier when it's continuous. You can solve for that a lot, a lot quicker. But um, we're definitely going to use a table here. I changed my mind. <clears throat> Actually, I'm putting my hand up because that's where I'm going to edit it. Cool. All right. Um, I might edit it <laughs> if I forget. If I forget to edit this, it's going to be stupid. Um, so let's go. Um, y equals. Okay. Let's turn off our plots. 
We're going to go to y equals because we need a table to give us a whole bunch of values of whatever we want, whenever we want. All right, and but we're going to put this in there exactly as we see it. Semi-annually is 2, so 1 plus. Put in that fraction. Uh, that guy is a percentage, 0 0.04. And it's going to be 2. And we're going to raise that to the 2 times x. Okay, 2 times x. Normally we would put t, but it doesn't matter. Um, and then what we, we want a table that will automatically put values in it, and we want to know when is it going to equal $2,452.28. Now my guess is that it is not going to take too long. I just did, um, it's going to be these small numbers here, so I just did start my table at 0, and I'll go up by 1. So now when I go to the table, you can see here that I'm looking for that guy. And that happens right there at year, let's see, let's push over, let's see what it gets, rounded, rounded it up to three, so that's the 28, so that is at four years, okay, so the answer is D. All right, same with this guy. Now you could use, um, I mean, yeah, why not, let's just use the calculator, right? Um, 4705, we could use logs, but... Um, <coughs> But whatever. 2% compounded continuously, and we're going to multiply that by x. Okay, so there's the 2%. And now I'm going back to my table set, start at 0, go here, and we're looking for 6,225. You can see that we're 6,000 right there. So, and 33 cents. Yep. So that's exactly 14 years there. Okay, that's when that happens. That is a fast way to do it. Um, it's Yeah, so you don't even need logs to solve for those um, because we've got logs here that we'll be careful of. Uh, where are we at? Seven minutes? Well, I'll do a few of these before I change the video over. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this guy into exponential form. So what we're saying is is that when you have a log, the log equals an exponent. Oh, my video froze. Okay. It froze, so I was talking, and my face was like, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Anyways, um, 20 to the exponent equals 1 over 400. That's all that they're asking. Okay, just just never forget that that's what a log is. All right. If I need to go backwards, okay, do the log. The base is 11, and the exponent has to be 2, and it's got to equal 121. Okay. So just remember that we do a loop. Okay, and then we just think about how we would write this. The exponent has to be alone on the other side of the equal sign, and you are changing the base into the into the number. All right. All right. What is it going to take for four to become one over sixty-four? Well, I know that four to the third power is sixty-three, but to get the one over, he's got to be negative. Okay. So just don't forget that that's what a negative exponent does. And then this is um, six to become negative thirty-six. Okay. So we know it's got to be to the power of two, but there's no way that we can make a positive six negative. So this is actually undefined. Okay. This one right here, to expand, we're going to um, split this completely apart. Um, let's go ahead and distribute the 5 into each one of those. Okay, So that would be um, log base 6 of 8 to the 5th power, and then 3 to the, yes, you were right, 30. Okay, now with that then, I can split them. And that would be log base 6 of 8 to the 5th minus log base 6 of 3 to the 30th. One more time. We can pull those exponents in front. Minus, and then put the 30 out in front. All right. And that's it. That's as far as you can go. Okay, so you probably thought you'd put the 5 in the front here. Now, if you did do that, okay, you would have to distribute the 5 
to this guy and the 5 to this guy. So what would end up happening is that there would have been a 6 out in front, and when you distribute the 5, it would have became 30. So either way it'll work. It's just you've got to remember that if you're going to take that 5 first, you'll have to distribute to both of these guys that are going to separate um, the logs. Okay. Likewise with this guy, this 6. Um, let me actually do it that way. Let's say that I took the 6 out. Okay. All right. And then now I've got... Um, I'm going to take these steps a little carefully. I don't want I don't want to go too fast here. Okay. Now what I've got here is this. Okay. I have split those, but notice that I put the brackets, okay? I put the brackets because um the 6 applies to both of them, okay? I like it doing this, just distribute it first, but we can distribute it later. That is a totally legit move. Um, that 3 is going to come out in front now, and this guy will stay the same. So then our final move, we will distribute those, and, oh, that's why, sorry. Okay, and that's it, and now we don't have brackets because we distributed the 6. Okay, all right, we will do this last one. Now we're going to squeeze it together, so let's put the 6 back into it. Okay, we'll do that with one step. Okay, we're going to put the 18 back into, uh, into the log as an exponent, and then we're going to squeeze these guys together. But because you have addition in between these logs, they're just going to be multiplied. Okay, so don't put a plus in between them anymore. They're going to they're multiplied. That's how that's why we can uh, um, that's why we have addition. All right, they got the same base. If they had different bases, we would not be able to do any of this stuff. Okay, we won't. We wouldn't be able to condense or expand. Okay, they have to be the same base. Okay, last one. It looks like um, the addition here means they're going to all squeeze together by multiplication, and the A will have a two exponent, and the B will have a five exponent. The C will just have an exponent of one. So I'll put these all in alphabetical order. You'll have a squared, b to the fifth, c. All right, and we just did that in one step. Um, they're all log base eights, so that is perfectly fine. I don't care how many steps it takes you. All right.